Councillor Gilligan. Councillor Gilligan, are you able to unmute? Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, folks. I'm having a bit of internet trouble here. OK. Can you hear me? Can people hear me? Yes, we can. Can you come on the camera, Dane? No, I'm, I'm, I'm really having some internet issues here. Um, okay. As soon as I put the camera on, it goes weak. As soon as somebody else speaks, it goes weak. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, right, okay. Can uh, in fact, I think because of where I am. Um, sorry, folks. I was I was due to chair this one. Um, but I think I'm going to have to avoid chairing it. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, you've cut out, you keep cutting out. Um, so I think I'm going to have to pass the, the baton, if I may, um, for someone else to chair and I will um, sit here and adjust everything that I can. OK, councillors, can you vote for a chair? Do you want to chair chat now? Maxine, you go ahead. <laughs> OK, just let me um, find the paperwork then. Oh, really sorry. It's okay. I'm just trying to find the order because I don't remember off the top of my head. We've got we've got appointment of chairs and declarations of interest. Yeah. So does anyone have any declarations of interest? No. I still need to find the paperwork though. Um, I think. There were two links. Uh, one of them has the agenda. Let me see if I can put it on the chat. Yeah, I've got the supplemental agenda. Hold on, I'm just bringing it up. I can't put it in the chat. Um, no, it's OK. I think I found it. OK. Um, just let me go through. No, usually it's set out, but yeah, it's in the there's two links. One is the agenda and one, one is the supplemental. So if I perhaps um, try to send this to you. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, I've got the supplemental agenda. Hopefully that's come through to you on Teams now. I'm sorry, everybody. Did that come through to you, Councillor? Yeah, I've seen it on Teams. I'm just clicking it. OK, perfect.
So we've done the appointment of Claire and the declaration of interest. Um, this is a So introduction, so it, we have to introduce ourselves. Um, so sorry, Councillor, just before you go on to the licensing procedure itself, um, just to make a note that the licensing minutes are approved following each meeting by the members yeah. meeting, not submitted to the next panel for approval. Um, and then yes, if we move to the licensing procedure, which is on page five and six, starting with the introductions. Yeah, so I'm Councillor Maxine Henson. Chetna. I'm Councillor Chetna Hello. Councillor Dean Gilligan. Thank you. Councillor, shall we ask the others to introduce themselves as well? Yes, please. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ashwa Geller and I'm the licensing officer for Harrow Council. Hello, good evening. My name is Nizar Danji and I'm a senior environmental health officer for the food safety team at the London Borough of Harrow. Thank you. So, um, hello, this is uh, Satya Sidhani Kumar and my wife, Komadi Kumar. Um, we, are, we are the applicant. Thank you. Yeah. So, officer presenting the report. Um, sorry, uh, Councillor, can, can we just have confirmation of Ms. Ms. Moore, is it? Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, um, I'm Arlene Aftenmawa and I'm here to support uh, Mr. Carr in their um, application and supporting you, the license. Are you, are you making representations for them? Yes as their spokesperson? Yes. Okay. Um, and my name is Paresh Smith, I'm the legal advisor to the panel. And so, sorry, Councillor, we also have Mr. Um, Settle Meta, the objector, if he wants to introduce himself as well, please. Yeah, hi, hi everybody, Settle Meta here. Um, I raised an objection across to uh, the notice that was on the shop wall and I've been dealing with Ash since. Thank you. So, um, officers presenting the report. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, everyone. Um, the Licensing Authority has received an application for a new premises license for Dragon's Lounge 225 Kenton Lane, Harrow. The application has attracted two representations, one from a member of the public and the other from an environmental health officer. This is um, this is an application for a restaurant with a shisha area at the back, at the rear. The licensable activities are going to be for the sale of alcohol and late night refreshment. If we look at um, section two of the report, we've put in a little schedule in there for the times that of um, the applicant has applied for on the original application. This this appears on page four of the report um, and then um, just below that on page five we have an agreement that's um, been reached with the police to reduce some of the times now what the police didn't do was they didn't actually work on the times for late night refreshment so during the process of this hearing those times will probably need to be clarified with the applicant um, other times and conditions that have been agreed with the police appear in Appendix 4 um, of the report. Now, I've got to come to the shisha bit of the application. Shisha is actually um, regulated by the Health Act 2006, um, and that, that's the act that, and, and the associated regulations we would enforce under. So shisha itself should not be a consideration for this hearing. However, 
what we would need to look at is the how the activity of shisha would affect the licensing objectives so for example the public nuisance objective or the um, protection of children from harm or the public safety objectives um, yeah i think that concludes my my presentation thank you chair thank you ash okay so officers of responsible authorities objecting yeah hello good evening um so in relation to the sort of shisha element of the premises uh, i know sorry to sorry to intervene sorry. um yep. actually i think um councillor you're reading the the uh, introduction section but i think we're uh, dealing with we've dealt with the presentation and it's now the presentation by the applicant okay i'm sorry that's okay well, apologies on my behalf. yeah okay. applicant yep and objectors yep so the applicant so does the applicant want to speak um arlene did you did you want to speak on behalf of the applicant are you representing the applicant sorry can you can you unmute please Can you unmute? You're still on mute, Arlene. I'm muting. <laughs> OK. Can you um, hear me now? Yeah, we can. Uh, are you representing the applicant? Are you, are you actually making submissions on behalf of the applicant? Yes. 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 OK. Do you, do you want to go ahead with your presentation, please? Then. OK, so shall I start with the shisha and address your um, representation, as it were? Uh, in the report. Okay. Yes, we, I, I understand that uh, there are issues with the design of the shisha because Haro has, in, in addition to the 50% op opening, that you require that it's 1.5 metres away from the walls, the sides of the um, actual shisha erection. OK. Um, I have advised my client to actually, in order not to try to, to, to break uh, or breach any rules, that they perhaps visit other shisha, um, shisha lounges to get some ideas as to how they could work with the council in order that we might reach some sort of agreeable design for the, the shisha in order to ensure that noise is not an issue and that the smoke will issue will also be reduced. Um, uh, in terms of uh, public safety, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure what um, issues there are with the public safety, apart from, say, fire safety, um, which all the fire safety um, uh, features have been and will be implemented as they have had a proper fire risk assessment and so they know which extinguishers they know what materials they can use and so on so we shouldn't have a problem with that aspect of things now an uh, environmental health officer visited the premises i understand and said that they found um, a staircase next to the shisha area which was blocked the items that were actually blocking the staircase and the emergency exit out did not belong to the Shisha building or, or to Dragon's Lounge. Those items actually belong to the tenant who uses those stairs as a back access at times. And in fact, the items when you, uh, Mr. Mr. Kumar, removed those items from that area and the tenant asked, where are my things? to show that it, it was not the, the work that was being done that had caused um, obstruction to the access, but in fact it were the people living there who had placed those items in that area. So therefore public safety there in that case would not be the responsibility of Mr. Mr. Kumar on, in that instance. In terms of um, protection of children from harm and the shisha, 
um, we do not envisage that children would be visiting the Shisha Lounge. We understand that, that there is a school behind the premises. There are no other buildings behind the premises. It's an access to back gardens and, and back off premises, business premises, uh, an access road, and then a playground for children at the school. Now, because we were concerned about the representation, um, we contacted the school directly to ask if they had any objection and if they felt that they would be affected by the shisha and they said categorically no and they have no issues and they are fine with the um with it being there because they don't feel that it would have any effect on them at all also the time of the shisha would be 5 p.m that's when they would start the shisha and children would have left the area by then who attend school so therefore there should be no children who are around to be affected or to be tempted. In addition to that, uh, Mr. Kumar is a, 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 an experienced personal license holder and a premises license holder of many years. So he does understand the implications of verification of aid and underage sales because he does already practice this. So therefore, he would take this new experience to his new venture. It would be no different. He would have to use, you know, protection of children from harm. He has the challenge 25. And he will also be ensuring that the staff are trained to check for age verification so that no underage sales are made. They will certainly be refused. Um, So we, we don't feel that it would actually have any impact on children in the area. So no children should be on the premises trying to get to Shisha at that time. Um, in, in, in view of the, the prevention of public nuisance, I have um, looked at the number of other Shisha ventures in the Harrow area. There are quite a few around and also so I, we can't see any reason why there should be a sudden influx of people to the area to cause further nu noise nuisance or litter nuisance in the area. Um, the, the, the shisha would um, really be mainly for those who are visiting as persons visiting the restaurant, have eating and then perhaps going to the shisha area to have a smoke, maybe have some desserts for quiet talk. It's not for, you know, rebel rousing um, in that area. And because often the shisha is sometimes erroneously associated with um, the first thing that people say, oh shisha, oh drug dealing, oh this and that, they don't have any intention of allowing that sort of uh, uh, activity on the centre. It's mainly a family oriented um, business with the restaurant, with families can go and adults can then go and have their shisha if they wish to do so. There will be obviously customers who are coming for shisha, but we do not expect a, a, a sort of mad rush to come to have shisha and, 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 and Oh, so many cars, so many more cars coming into the area, more traffic jams. In fact, the times when there are most traffic jams are when the children are being dropped off from at, at school and picked up from school. Not no other times. So um, I think the shisha should not have any adverse effect on the area and would in fact be an addition for persons in the area for another activity that they could to do. And it shouldn't affect children at all. And the normal rules should apply for underage smoking or drinking. Thank you. And with, sorry, can I just want to say once, the design of the shisha, we are working on the design to see if we can come to an, an agreeable design that would help to mitigate noise, 
and also to have perhaps to measure noise using a noise meter to ensure that the noise does not um, go above, uh, which is acceptable. And the design also so that the smoke would be directed away from the building and not just go in towards the building. So we are working on different designs. As I said, I've asked uh, Mr. Carr to visit other places. Some of them are my clients and I've asked, could we have a look? Could he have a look to see how you have made your design um, successful and workable? And that we are in the process of doing. He has already started and we're still continuing to do so. And um, yeah. So, uh, actually, um, I, maybe I should address the litter as well. I, I, I don't understand um, what litter would be created from this new venture because it's not a takeaway. So therefore, no takeaway containers would be expected to be dropped on the floor or, or, or overflowing in the bins. Um, it's, uh, it puzzles me as to what other sort of um, litter would be created by persons coming in into and out of a restaurant. And do you currently have a problem with litter? Because Mr. Kumar also has a, another shop along that parade. He has no issue with it, litter and he's not having any particular issues with litter on that particular parade of shops. So we, we are a bit puzzled as to what extra litter would be created by someone or people coming to, to eat and to have a shisha. Thank you. Does councillors, do they have any questions they wish to put to the applicant? Dean? Yeah, thank, thank you, Maxine. Um, Arlene, I suppose I'm addressing you then. Um, okay. I, I can't hear anything. Yeah, I think you've gone back onto mute, Councillor. Hello. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Wonderful. I'll start again. Um, <laughs> you mentioned um, in your um, presentation that the mm -hmm. Shisha Bar would be opening at five. Yes. Uh, although I see in the hours of business um, that is uh, somewhat different there. And in fact, I I was um, trying to ascertain those hours of business because um, it says seven o'clock in the morning till one thirty in the in the morning. Yeah. That's the um, restaurant. <laughs> well, That's the restaurant. So what? the restaurant will be open for breakfast. Ah, right. Yes. I, well, that's, yeah, that, I, I want clarity on that. Yeah. Yes, it's open for breakfast and, and meals during the day, but the shisha um, will not be going on till five in the morning. Right, so it will. Oh, that's it. So you will do changed. breakfast. You, you're going to open up for breakfast at seven o'clock in the morning. Yes. And proceed as a normal restaurant until 5 p.m. Yes. When you would open the shisha. Also offer the shisha as well as the restaurant facilities. Okay. Okay, that okay, that that points that one out. Um, may I continue because I've got a couple here. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. And then I think it came up in um, one of the questions. Um, I think Ash might have asked it. Um, but the late night refreshment um, element mm -hmm. of it. Um, so you got the the supply of alcohol consumption on the premises up until eleven thirty. Yes. Uh, during the week until Friday and Saturday is 1.30. What is the late night refreshment that's going on till two in the morning? So, um, we won't have the late night refreshment in the shisha area. Right, because it, I mean, it, and both both of those uh, diagrams, it doesn't actually um, say anything about that. But the, so the late night refreshment will be soft drinks and from what? Yes. One, from 11.30. Yeah. Uh, during the week, yes. And Friday and Saturday from one thirty. Yes. So those late night refreshments. Sorry, those late night refreshments. Soft drinks are not late night refreshments. So. What are soft drinks? Then? What, are, what are late night refreshments? Then? Late night refreshment includes hot drinks and hot food between eleven p.m. and five a.m. 
So there will can be refreshments, but they're not they don't come under the licensing act or the late night refreshment rule. They are just refreshment. There's just a drink to refresh the individual, not food. Until not, when did you say? Until four hours? No, no, we are, they're not opening till 5 a.m. any longer because, you know, representations were made and um, the police asked for the, the times to be reduced. Sorry, okay. so on, the, on the diagrams, on the diagrams, I've got supply of alcohol for consumption on the premises, 7 till 23.30, then late night refreshment, 23 to 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, can, you go, I, I have, can you go to the uh, actual applicants because I haven't spoken to to them. So since that, things have changed. Sorry, Arlen. On that diagram is um, late night refreshment uh, timing is wrong because we are open for public until twelve, but late night refreshment says two o'clock, which is not right. On both on both of those um, diagrams, the the amended one. From the original one and then the amended one, they both say till two in the morning. The amended one is not amended the column late night refreshment according to the open uh, hours, I guess. So, that what? is arranged with the police. Maybe um, I haven't made that uh, amendment. It was done by council. So what would you be wanting to do then? Because you know, if, we, if you're looking for an agreement from us, we need to know um, we'll close, yeah. close at 12 p.m. Yes. Monday. Right, so you're now you're. Right, so you open from seven in the morning and close at 12. That's correct. Yes. And you will stop serving alcohol at 23.30. That's correct. Yes. Well, that's that's a whole different number we got in front of us. And yeah. okay. that's, that was an amendment that was made, was suggested by the police. That yes. was the amendment on top of the amendment on top of the amendment, yeah? <laughs> right. OK, then then my other my other um, question is that um, in your presentation, Arlene, um, yeah. you spoke about um, getting your clients to romp around all these other shisha bars to see what they're like. Does that does that uh, imply to me that you haven't sought planning permission for the shisha bar? Or you don't have planning permission? For it? No, you just make it. May I? Uh, no. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. yeah, so we uh, um, so we have uh, applied for um, rare extension, um, but we have not mentioned uh, shisha. We we didn't know actually if there is any specific um, permission uh, to. I, run. I you know I'm not the, uh, the I'm up on the legal bit, but I think you need to apply for that. Do you not? Uh, yes, just only now after Mr. Nizar Danji visit, uh, we knew that we have to have a um, sue generic uh, application to make. So we are still waiting to do that one with the uh, planning um, for the shisha. Right. So, you, so in, in other words, you don't have planning permission for the shisha bar. Not yet. At sir. this point. Okay. Okay. Not and then itself but it, 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 which is why I've asked them to Mr. Kumar to actually go to see designs that actually work and designs that are compliant with the the council's um, guidelines. Yeah I, I'm, I'm, if, if I'm presented with a piece of paper and, and asked to make a decision on a, on a document um, so far we've drawn out that the timings are different the late night refreshments don't mean late night refreshments and you don't have planning permission. I just want to make sure that I'm I'm fully briefed on this. Um, so if I may, I will um, ask another question on the residents living above, which um, causes me concern. Um, in your presentation, there was an issue on um, blockage uh, or stairway blockage and all that. And uh, apparently it was a resident upstairs and there was a you, 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 you know, you sort of clearly had words. But what effect and, and what notification have you have you given to this resident living above about the shisha potential um, situation with the shisha at the back? Have they been informed? Because at the moment, you, we by all you know, intents and purposes, we can see a design for a restaurant 
And if I was living above that restaurant, I would be saying, oh, they're, they're looking at doing a restaurant. But the shisha adds another element to it that you haven't actually sought planning permission for yet. Um, and what, what notification have you give that, that well, say me, if I was living up there, what, what have you told me? Have you told me anything? Yes, sir. we have uh, communicated with the uh, yes. resident upstairs and also the landlords they were of, uh, because it's the same landlord for upstairs and downstairs. We have spoken to the resident upstairs as well as soon as we take over the premises, what we're going to do. And then the... Um, sorry, the, Yeah. Have, have you got any more questions? Because Ash and Paris want to come in. <laughs> OK, I'll, I'll, I'll come back later then. Cheers. No, it's fine. Ask your questions. Um, yeah, no, look, I'm, I'm all right. They, they, they tend to spring up as I hear things, you know me. All right, so I'll, uh, I'll bounce yeah. back in if anything. Thanks, Maxie. OK, Ash. Um, thank you, Chair. Just, just to confirm, I'm going back to this late night refreshment. Just, just for clarity, um, for for Councillor Gilligan and and, and the other two councillors, um, late night refreshment only applies to the sale of the provision of hot food or hot drink between the hours of 2300 and 0500. But it doesn't mean that the the premises should be licensed for those hours. It just means that anybody who's who's providing that hot food or hot drink has to have a license if they're operating between those times on any day of the week. Um, so that that's just for clarity. Um, now, coming back to this late night refreshment on these particular, um, this particular application, we've got the, um, just trying to get back to the agenda papers. Right, so on page five, we've got the, the the agreement that's been actually made with the police for the sale of alcohol and the hours open to public. But what's not actually being agreed with the applicant at the moment by the police or anybody else is the hours that have been applied for on the original application, which is um, 2300 to 0, 0200 at the moment for every day. Now, because you've, you've agreed the hours for hours open to public, which is 7 a.m. to midnight, is it Monday to uh, Monday to Thursday? And then you've got Sunday as well, 7 a.m. to midnight. Um, the recommendation here would be, would you agree for the late night refreshment hours to match? Sorry, and, and Friday and Saturday, you've got 7 a.m. to 2 a.m., is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Is that, that's what's been agreed. Yes. So the recommendation here would be, do you want to match your late night refreshment hours to the hours open to public, which has been agreed with the police? Yes, sir. Yes. Is, is that's what you want? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. okay. All right. So that, that's just to bring clarification. That, that, that was my only question. The, the, the issue about she shares I've explained before. Um, yes. Sui generis is, is needed to carry out shisha, but that is not um, that is not a consideration for this licensing panel. It's a separate issue and it's it's done by planning. I think yeah. um, Parish would agree with this if if I let Parish come in. We we should not be duplicating. We should not be encroaching on other legislative requirements. What what we're concerned here with is issues that, that can arise with undermining the licensing objectives or conditions that will underpin the licensing objectives further than what they already have been um, in agreement. So the issue about Shisha, Shisha itself is not a licensable activity under the Licensing Act. We, we don't have a license for Shisha um, anywhere in the country, but it is regulated and it is controlled under the Health Act 2006 and it's associated smoke free regulations, which basically say that any shisha area has to be 50% or more open to the air. The issue here that I, uh, I think is that if it is 50% or more open to the air and it is in very close proximity to the flats above, um, what effect is that going to have on the things like odor nuisance 
um, the noise that people are going to make because once you've had once people have had a few drinks and having a bit of shisha and it comes to one o'clock in the morning or on a, on a Saturday Saturday morning they're going to make a lot of noise so how is that noise going to be controlled in the interest of the prevention of public nuisance um, but th thank you chair thank you Parrish Thank you, Chair, um, and thank you, Ash. Yes, you picked up on a couple of points I was going to make about late night refreshment. Um, and thank you for clarifying um, that the hours are going to match the hours open to public for late night refreshment. The, um, the point that Ash made, I completely agree with that licensing and planning are two separate regimes. Um, and I think the licensing policy does state that applicants are encouraged and should resolve their planning uh, permission and planning requirements before coming to here if they if they can, but in any event you must do that regardless. Um, in terms of that rear space which we're, we're currently talking about, the shisha area, what I would um, like the councillors to have clarification on from, from you Mr Kumar or, or Arlene if I may, is um, whether that area is also included as part of your licensable area. So obviously you've said, you've spoken about late night refreshment. Is alcohol, is the supply of alcohol also going to be in that area as well? Yes. Yes, okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Chair, Hello there. Um, Arlene, may I ask, do we know the capacity for the, the plan, yes, the plan, the planned or um, dental capacity is about 30 persons. However, if we feel that that number will impact significantly on noise, then that number can be reduced. So at any one time, there should be no more than. 30 at, 30 at the rear, at the rear at of the, the restaurant. At the rear of the restaurant. And if there is a noise issue, or if we think that there will be a great impact on, of noise on the residents or anyone else in the area, then the numbers from can be reduced from 30. Okay. Okay. And do we know where the opening is likely to be in the design of this? new part that's being built do we know how close to the residents that's going to be the occupants your um harrow stipulation is that it needs to be at least 1.5 meters away from the residents on either side of the um actual structure okay and it has to be 50 percent open so there will be openings where of course, the smoke will um, escape. Um, so we're trying to find a design where maybe the smoke can be directed away from the building rather than be funneled up through um, closer to the building. And also on one side, there's a very high, I think a two story wall mm -hmm. that would help to stop smoke from actually getting to that side of the parade behind uh, the building. I know I'm not I know smoke goes everywhere. However, it helps to dissipate smoke in the immediate vicinity around where the windows and so on of the buildings are. OK, do we know if the smoke will be directed towards the back of the, the premises where, where I believe is that residential homes? Some are residential homes at the top above the businesses. Yes, but the what about at the back? back? It's so it wouldn't be directed towards the back of the buildings where the actual home. We would try to find a design where the smoke could be directed away from the building. Of course, we can't control unless there's an uh, um, something that takes the smoke away actively. Um, but the, in the design, we're trying to find a way to, so that the impact is less towards the actual residential buildings and will it be will it be an enclosed space or will there be space it can't for be enclosed 
It can't. As it has not, not closed, but is it going to be people can step completely outdoors? If you see what I'm saying, will there be space for somebody wow. just to go go and get fresh air and go outside, for example? Yes, they, well, they can go to the front as all the other businesses do, um, because there is another restaurant along that parade. There is also a cafe and they, some go to the back in the other restaurants into the garden to smoke and others smoke at the front of the building. And so they also smoke underneath the windows in okay. front of uh, where other the residents are living. Okay. Um, I, okay. I know that the, the smoke of a seizure is far more pungent, um, but if there are several people smoking below your window, I, that, that would also um, affect you, I am sure. You would notice the smoke and um, I, I don't believe that there has been any um, complaints regarding smoking underneath windows or near to the residences. As okay. far as I know. Okay, thank you. And finally, do we know the access um, for this rear extension? Is it going to be through the building, or is it? Yes, it will be through the building. Will there be any it will be from the side? No. 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 Okay, no. One access point, and that will be through the restaurant itself, in and out. Yes. Okay. Yes, and it will. There obviously is going to be a fire escape, so it, 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 people can get out should there be an emergency. But it would be preferred that pe people do not enter from from there, and there is more control if you if they're all coming through the same the same way. Okay. Other different okay. entrances where you know you might not be able to keep an eye on both entrances or uh, as well as one should. And at weekends, it was suggested by the um, licensing authority that they have an SIA um, personnel on the doors on Fridays and Saturday nights. Right. And that's also prevention of um, crime and disorder, protection of children, children from harm. So they will be vetted. People will be vetted who are going to be in the Shisha area. Great, thank you. And finally, are designs currently being uh, made for for this creation at the back? Are, are you have you got a designer involved? I'm not involved in making the design, mm -hmm. but because um, I have mm -hmm. other clients who have shisha lounges and are up and operating and have had no issues, no problems. Um, with the authorities or anyone, I have asked my clients to go to see some of these places to see how, how they have um, overcome these issues and um, they have been allowed. So my other clients have welcomed them and shown them around. So I think Mr. Kumar is now working with the architect okay. to, to try to come to a, 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 a building or a structure that will be satisfactory to the licensing authority and um, and the council and one that you know we both find agreeable so right. working that situation thank you very much thank you arlene mm -hmm. Nizal? You want to ask your questions? Yeah, I just wanted to sort of uh, reiterate. So I think Ash has said in relation to the the noise and the smoke from shisha. If you've got say thirty mm -hmm. people in the rear, and mm -hmm. if they've had a few drinks in relation to the noise, that was sort of concerns we had. And also mm -hmm. in relation to, so I've 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 carried out a site visit, and mm -hmm. we have advised a client in relation to planning, which is. Or sort of a separate issue which i think mm -hmm. they are they are looking to do with planning yeah. but the only thing is in relation to the the structure at the back for shisha has to be 50 percent open on a permanent basis and if this yeah. is the case the stairway from the fire exit will lead down and the way it will have to be designed and what we've seen the one side of the wall at the premises to the rear the high wall you'll have to have it one point five meters away from that and then where the fire exit is as well you work that will have to be sort of open as well so they've got to make sure that is 50 percent open so this will reduce the size of the structure 
and the openings will be quite sort of large in relation to noise will be admitted and if you've got people smoking shisha that smoke will sort of come out from the sides as well so those were the concerns sort of that we did have in relation to the noise mm -hmm. and the odor from the shisha especially if it has to be open 24 7 50 percent they can't have any shutters or any awnings mm -hmm. or any closing devices so and in relation to going to other shisha premises all i would say is each premises is an individual premises and each another shisha premises might have a different design it might be a different floor space they might have a different floor area so just be mindful when you are designing a shisha place the main rule is has to be 50 percent open and the concerns we do have is sort of the noise and the smoke for not just the flat above but sort of the residents sort of in the area as well any adjoining flats for residents mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Dean? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, right, during those presentations again, I then heard that you would be um, serving um, drinks in the shisha bar. So therefore, the the license that you are looking for, and uh, yeah, this is where I'll look at Paresh and all those other wonderful people on this um, call to enlighten me, because you've applied the planning application has gone for this um, restaurant and the hours. You've also, within that, you've said the um, shisha bar, but then during the questioning just now, um, you said that you will be serving drinks and alcohol in the shisha bar. Now, when I was informed earlier um, that it was not for us to talk about planning permission and this, that and the other, but how can I then make a, a decision if if you're including the alcohol in the shisha bar that you haven't actually got planning permission for and that we haven't actually seen and how that that may affect um, the residents or other people around. Um, we're hearing presentations about smoke wandering over walls and this that, and the other, but during the, when I've read the report, I haven't seen in the report that it says that the alcohol will be going into the shisha bar, that you will be carrying on that business in the shisha bar. So, I again then ask why are we asked to make a decision being told that we can't make a decision on planning but we're asked to make a decision on something that we haven't seen and don't know what what what's going to happen um Paresh I'm looking at you my friend to answer that one thank you thank you councillor um I understand the the difficulty you're facing um, whilst the, the planning and licensing regimes are, are, are separate, I think the point you're making is that at this point in time, we don't know what the planning uh, circumstance will be around the rear um, area. Um, and that makes it difficult for you to decide in terms of the license uh, that might be granted because you've heard that there will be late night refreshment and alcohol um, supply of alcohol in that area as well. Um, to some extent, it, it, it is potentially possible to separate out the, the two areas. Um, I don't know whether the applicant would be minded to amend his application so that the rear area is not included for licensable activities. But having said that, um, we do have to bear in mind that the disturbance caused in the shisha area could still have an impact on the licensed area um, or to, to the extent that um, it's causing a, a nuisance there or, or as part of the whole license because this is the perimeter of the uh, property, the whole site that's that's relevant. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, that somebody sitting there puffing on a, a, a pipe um, with 50 percent open space is different than somebody being served drinks, ordering drinks and having alcohol. And it, this is why I raised that to say, well, why are we being asked to make a decision when we haven't seen the final plans and, and know where we're at? Um, so and, and when I read this, th this report, it didn't it didn't imply in the report that the alcohol would be served in the shisha area. We, we had this ambiguous bit with late night refreshments, which was coffee and teas and and whatnots. But now we're talking alcohol. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Is there any other questions? 
No. So then we've got the presentation by the objectors, but I don't think there is. Oh, Nizal? Yeah, so I just wanted to ask the applicant in relation to, they said they're not going to serve shisha at 12 o'clock. So in the afternoon, if sort of a group does come in and they want to smoke shisha, are they saying that they're going to turn them away and it will be after five o'clock? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Yep, OK, so this was would this be in one of the conditions then, is it? Yes, you can put it there. OK. Thank you, Neza. Can we have the presentation by the objectors? Uh, yes, uh, that's me here. So firstly, apologies, I'm not on camera. The children are downstairs with the bandwidth and therefore if I come on camera, you will not be able to hear me. So therefore, apologies for not being on camera. Uh, yeah, that's secondly, fine. I don't think this is a conflict of interest, but I will share for transparency. I'm a trustee of the Pegasus Partnership Trust, which is a multi academy trust, which includes the school that sits behind uh, the shop. But I'm not a governing member and I'm not speaking on behalf of that school. So sharing, but it doesn't have an impact. And then the third bit before I go into the details, a number of the local residents have a concern, but they didn't put themselves forward. So whilst that bit is irrelevant and I am going to be stating my views and my views only, it does represent some of the wider community's concerns too. I'm going to split my conversation into two bits. The first bit will be the protection of public nuisance. I'll go through my points around that. I'll pause for any uh, responses and then I'll go on to the second bit. So, um, so as a result of the opening hours shared, there is definitely going to be an increased likelihood of noise during unsociable hours. You know, we, we know that and that's going to be added to this, especially knowing that there's going to be an open area and potentially up to 50%. You then got another place that allows for food to be served, which increases. You know, and I talk, I know we talked about the point around litter, but we've had a significant issue within that area with litter, so much so that there were various um, petitions played across to the council and the council installed extra CCTV to be able to address the issue of litter. And and therefore that has taken place. So there shouldn't be any doubt in anybody's mind there is an issue with litter there was, it's being addressed by the cameras, notwithstanding the fact that um, we know for a fact from many of the residents that they are continuing to use the Harrow Council app to register litter within that vicinity. So I don't know where the stats go or where that information goes, but there is certainly um, litter issues that are being expressed across to the council using the various means available. And then the final bit on this section for me is around the inevitable increase in traffic, and, and the words I used were influx. Um, I, I think we'll have to agree to disagree. I do genuinely believe if there is a shisha lounge and another restaurant, it will increase both footfall and cars coming to be able to use those and therefore traffic increase, noise increase and pollution increase. So, but we can agree to disagree on those points. Before I move on to the children from harm element, was there anything anybody wanted to ask me off the back of those points? Um, could I ask a question please regarding the litter? Yes. Um, and what sort of litter is it that's um, been increasing in the area? Can no, it be? I think can, it, can, it, can it? Can it be? Um, can Can any of the food places be implicated? Do you know for certain that it's perhaps the food places that um, have contributed to that litter, or is it just people walking past, um, trying to uh, and just dropping whatever litter they have? Is there any specific type of litter that has increased? Um, so, so not to the best of my knowledge, there are two things that take place. There is uh, the dustbin that's outside of the news agent, which is always full and overflowing and therefore gets cleaned up very regularly. And the second bit is um, I do not know the type of litter, but I do know there are various requests put through on the app to say, please, could you come up and clean these areas? But I couldn't tell you whether it's related to the news agent, the laundress, the restaurant, the cafe or any of the other shops that sit within that vicinity. OK, but but then that suggests that if there's a litter bin that's always over full, should it, is it not the responsibility of the council to ensure that there are sufficient uh, litter waste bins to, to uh, well, uh, I, that, cope that with? May be, uh, apologies, I was talking over you, sorry. Yes, would it not be the responsibility of the council to ensure that the area is serviced with enough waste um, facilities? for that particular area. 
and and if people are attempting to put in the bin and it's overflowing then it it is a council issue i would have thought and 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 not because people want to be litterbugs as it were yeah. i don't disagree at all i just wanted to make the point that actually having one more location that serves food and other areas could compound that as opposed to potentially having i don't know i'm making this up on the spot but an accountant or a lawyer or so, there's yeah. like so I'm, I'm more making the point one more location of this type of service could compound the issue but you are right it's it's not the issue of this group it's the issue of our council but to say that litter is not an issue that that was my point I don't okay can, I, can mr kumar have his say because mr kumar runs the news agent mm -hmm. perhaps yeah. mr kumar yeah. Mr. Kamal, you can speak. Yes, yes. I'm running a post office on the same parade, um, and um, we we seen uh, dumping uh, at the back. Uh, people are dumping mattresses and all that. Uh, apart from, I don't see any litter issue. I always go out and pick litters around because part of my post office contract as well. I need to keep that area clean. Uh, we always keep it tidy. Okay. Yes. So, so I'll move on to the protection of children from harm, if that's OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, carry on. Yeah. So for me, um, uh, and this might be a point of semantics. So when I spoke to the applicant, it, I believed it was my suggestion to go and speak to the school as opposed to the applicant done that in advance, because when I'd spoken to them, they'd said they hadn't spoken to the school at that point. Um, so I'd hope they'd done that off the back of it. And it's good news that the school had no issues. So apologies if that's a point of semantics, but I thought I'd raise it. The bigger issue for me is um, the the school timings. So, so I think it is wrong to say the school and the children won't be there at five o'clock because my children, along with about 40, 50 others, join the after school club, which finishes at 545. And then at six o'clock, you have scouts and beavers at least two, maybe three times a week. That goes from six to 730. And then from 730 to nine o'clock is my understanding. Uh, and they also the school also rents out their hall which means that the various other communities and groups so there will be an influx of people so for the avoidance of doubt there will be children there potentially up to nine o'clock and that is up to the well under the age of 16 so i think it's factually incorrect to say it's five o'clock it's more just making that point and everybody to be aware and then you know that then means if you are going to have children and adults doesn't really matter up until at least nine o'clock due to that school renting out and having various things Again, it creates the potential of, of harm to children, but we, we, ha we don't know who's going to come along to the restaurant or not. And that ne doesn't necessarily mean this one or any other, but there is certainly going to be children around till nine o'clock. And I don't think we should shy away from that point. Uh, no, we shouldn't shy away from it. However, uh, can you uh, Mr. Kumar, so, okay, so, sorry, 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 I'm very can sorry. You break, please. Um, have you finished? Mr. Meta. Uh, yes, I have. Thank you. So now does anyone have any questions for Mr. Meta? Yes, may I ask, please? Yes, go yes. ahead. How are children who are, as you suggest, are ostensibly under the age of 16 going to gain access to the shisha area of the restaurant? Um, they won't have access to, well, I, I don't know what the back entrance of the Shisha land will look like to the access. There, was no, there is no back entrance. There will be no back entrance to the Shisha land. There will be an exit should there, for public safety, um, should there be an emergency for people to go out. However, the entrance will be through the front, through the restaurant to gain access okay. to the Shisha area. Yeah. Sorry, can I ask that you let people uh, finish speaking first before you interrupt? So, Mr. Uh, so me, the, for me, the children will be, there will be children and accompanied adults walking up and down the access road that sits behind the building. And so therefore, um, if there is no harm to those children or access to those children, or we, even with the accompanying adults, no issues i'm raising that for awareness along with any of the other things we've talked about earlier around noise and potential pollution eileen do you want to come back yes because there will there will be no access to the premises through the back the only um 
the, the only point of leave is, is leaving the, the, the premises should there be an emergency, but no one will be access, will have access through the back of the building. They will all have to come through the front of the building and, and anyone under 18 will not be allowed in the shisha area, even if it's to have a drink or whatever, a, a Coca-Cola or whatever, they are not allowed in the shisha area. And, and Mr. Kumar, as I said, is an experienced license holder. So he is very much aware of um, the, the, the protection of children from harm objectives and, and implementing all the verification procedures to check the age and the identity of of individuals, and he is, and he, and he's also um, able to 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 not to admit someone should he feel that it is uh, not not appropriate for them to be there. So they could not enter the shisha area. No one under eighteen would be able to uh, um, access the shisha area without being first um, subjected to verification of identification and age procedures. Thank you. Um, Nizar? I just wanted to sort of comment on the flat above because when I carried out a site visit, the fire exit stairway leads straight into the rear yard, which will be where the sheesh area is. And that sheesh area, as it's going to be 50% open, Whoever's living upstairs and go downstairs, if they've got children, so you might have residents there now, but in the future, if you've got children staying upstairs or a family staying upstairs, mm -hmm. those children will have access because the shish area won't be blocked because it has to be 50% open. So that's another sort of concern that I would sort of have as well. Thank you, Nizar. Does anybody else have any questions for the objector? No, Mr. Kumar, do you have any other questions for the object to the objector? No, madam. I don't have. Thank you. Thank you. Arlene, do you have? Can I make a comment that the the back entrance is not used to 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 um enter the the flat upstairs? It's not used on a regular basis. The stairs are there for access to go down if they so wish, but the entrance to that flat is actually from the front of the parade. So it's not a regularly used um, stairs, hence the reason why all that material had been um, stored on the stairs, which would not allow people to, to, to go past or children to go past. It would be dangerous for them even to go past. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Meta, did you want to ask another question? Uh, no, they were all my comments. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nizar? Yeah, so when I carried out the site visit, I was informed by the, the food business operator, the premises, Mr. Komar, that that was all his sort of building item. And the builder confirmed that was all his building items. And he, the builder actually said, I will remove that. In relation to the upstairs, that is a fire exit leading out. And where, how do they access to get their waste? Um, are the bins at the back or at the front of the premises? So I would assume they're using that stairway to gain access to the back. So they would still be using it to go sort of up and down. Whether they're using the front or the back, there's still going to be access to so the rear of the premises used by the resident that resident upstairs. Mr. Kumo. Um, um, hello. Um, oh, hi. Uh, on the day of Nizar's um, visit, we had the builder around who was working on the premises, and I believe he had few bricks around that area. I do agree there were some paint pots and other things around on the staircase, which has, has belonged to the um, tenants. On the spot, uh, we have instructed the builder to make sure it is not blocking the fire exit for the tenants, and he has done it on the same day, and we will make sure that the fire exit is not blocked for an emergency. Thank you. So can I just ask, where do the tenants, if they want to uh, get rid of their bins, where, where is their bin area? 
We are not aware about uh, where they keep the bin, um, but I have not seen the bin. But uh, as I said to you, um, on the day when the visit, we have made clear the fire exit is free of any hazards. OK, so then access might be used for them to go from the rear of the premises as well. So we can't assume they're not going to use the rear access. They might use the rear access more often than the front. We're just making an assumption that they're not. Yes, it could be that they have got the bins at the back. So, um, I mean, we do need to speak to the tenant and find out these are. Yeah, because that's not just the fire exit. It's also access for them to get to the rear of the premises as well. Yes, I do. I agree with that. OK, thank you. Thank you. OK, thank you. So now we go to closing statements. So first, the applicant, can you make your clo uh, closing statement, please? Would you like to do it? OK, um, as, as we have said, um, we've tried to address your concerns on protection of children from harm. And as I said, Mr Kumar is an experienced license holder. He is well aware of how to um, verify uh, age procedure and who he can refuse from the premises. So he will not be um, tolerating anyone who tries to enter who's underage, okay, um, for, with the smoking. Um, the prevention of public nuisance, as we said, although it might be drifting out into a planning issue, we're trying to use a design that will help to mitigate lesser noise in the premises. We will um, lessen the number of people who might be able to go into that area in order so also for the noise to be kept to uh, 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 an acceptable level. We also will be able to monitor the noise in that area so also to keep it within uh, a, a, an appropriate level. Um, the design of the building of the structure we're also trying to make so that it perhaps um, guides the smoke further towards the back rather than that rising directly and possibly affecting the residents above. And, you know, he's willing to work with the council to come to some sort of a, 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 um, an agreement which is acceptable for both yourself for, for yourselves and, 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 and himself as, as a business owner. And with the noise, the, the litter um, issue for the um, prevention of public nuisance, as Mr. Kumar says, in his contract as a post office, he is required to ensure that the front of his building remains litter free as far as possible. And in so doing, he will also implement that with his business as a food business. So um, we're hoping that you will agree to allow the um, premises license to be granted. Um, and if necessary, if the shisha, if, if you really feel that you, the shisha is not allowed, if perhaps, you know, it can be used for other purposes, again, with your agreement and with the planning permission in place. Thank you. Thank you. Now, can I have a closing statement from the objectors, please? Uh, I'll start if that's OK. So um, yeah, do I believe, do I believe there'll be an increase in traffic, noise and pollution as a result of agreeing to this license? I, I firmly do. Uh, and I think that actually by not granting it, it'll enable a significant reduction in those areas. Do I believe that there is a risk um, potentially to children by agreeing to that license? indirectly rather than directly because we know that there is a back entrance where children will be walking albeit accompanied from the hours of early morning through to up to nine o'clock during weekdays and then at times during the summer holiday yes i do uh, and on those bases and um, that's why i've objected thank you mr meta so now that can yes oh, did you want to say something yeah just sort of a final point in relation to if there is shisha at the back, it has to be 50% open on a permanent basis. And I think it's very difficult to say there'll be no sort of noise from people that will use the premises if they're drinking alcohol, and there'll be no odour from sort of the premises in relation to the shisha that's being smoked as well. 
So I, I think on that sort of basis, it will be de very, very difficult to have a shisha premises that will not allow noise and sort of odour to be emitted from the premises. Thank you, Nizza. Okay, that can, oh, Mr. Meta. Sorry, Councillor. Um, oh, I just... sorry, uh, Parish, sorry. Yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> And again, for transparency, neither Settle, Meta or I are related. I, I don't know him at yeah, all. Yeah, you've just got the same name yeah. and that when I saw it, I just focused on that. Yeah. Um, sorry, if I may um, ask Arlene just to clarify a comment she made at the end about um, if necessary that the shisha is not allowed um, to allow it for other purposes. Are you, are you suggesting there that if your license was just to be granted for the existing structure, then then that would be um, an option acceptable to you. Yes, yes. OK, thank you. OK, thank you. I want to thank you all for, for coming. Um, we will go now and deliberate and we will let you know our decision within five working days. Thank you. So thank, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you.